Hi everyone, welcome back. I hope you've all been safe. I was here two days ago and I did a little speculative dig. This is a 1960s site and I expected to find 1960s stuff. And I did, apart from one or two gems. Now unfortunately I didn't take my camera with me because I thought I'll just be here for a couple of minutes. Oh, I wish I'd brought my uh, camera with me. This bottle was not one or two, but three of these that I found. Uh, some of them didn't have the lids, some had uh, major damage to the neck, and I also found two clear glass versions of these bottles. These bottles were manufactured by the Warren Glass Works Company of Cumberland, Maryland. And I've done some research, and these bottles were manufactured between 1880 and 1888. I've also found a couple of brown bottles, which I've been able to date back to 1900 to 1920. What's the big deal, apart from them being beautiful looking bottles? Well, this is a 1960s dig. Why are there so many American bottles and so many old bottles in a 1960s site? Now back in the 1960s, my local town was having a, a bit of urban renewal. And I think before they demolished the buildings, they just cleared them of all household stuff, buried it here, not burnt, buried it here. And now here I am 55 years later doing a bit of a dig. So why are there so many of these bottles? That's what I'm hoping to find out today. Now, the majority of my subscribers are actually American. Hello to everyone across the pond. Have you ever seen bottles like this before? Do you actually have some of these bottles? Uh, it's blue, so of course it would be some sort of poison, but do you know what was actually in these bottles? I've actually checked online and the clear glass versions apparently contained milk. And one of the bottles actually has scratch marks to show that it was, uh, the label was removed because someone wanted to keep the bottle. I'm sort of hoping, really hoping, that I've uncovered someone's discarded bottle collection. How cool would that be? Anyway, I'm going to get moving, and uh, I'll show you some of the other things I found as well. These are worth mentioning. How cool is this? How cool is that? A complete unopened bottle of 1960s aspirins, including the cotton wool at the top. That is seriously cool. What else did I find for you? Quite a few of these. Um, these are decanter lids, uh, hollow glass, so they're really, really nice. I've got about five of these. Whoa. Also, I found a bit of, um, a bit of crockery, and I wanted to check, see how old this crockery was. Wałbrusz in Poland. It dates from 1953. Uh, apart from that, it's only worth mentioning that Wałbrusz is thought to be the site of the Nazi gold train that was buried after the Second World War. How cool would that be? And also a bit of uh, crockery I found here, a bit of china, and it has the word Washington on it. It's got um, the zodiac on one side, but Washington on the other. And I thought, aha, the American connection. But Washington was actually Stoke-on-Trent. It was the Washington Potteries, and these were made from 1946 through to 1970. Right, I'm going to get digging now, and as soon as I find something, I'll let you know. This is as far as I got last time. Um, I think it's just a jar, but I'm going to dig it up anyway, because you never know. And here we go. Yep, yeah, 1960s jar. Although I did think I'd found a, um, a coin spill until I discovered it was just a button spill. This had a screw cap, so it can't be that old, but it could be an interesting shape. Hmm, I wonder what that was used for. Okay, I won't actually say just another milk bottle. I'll just say, a milk bottle. Keeping in mind this stuff was dumped here just around about 55 years ago, plus or minus a few years. Uh, the labels on some of the bottles, which I found the other day, were actually still almost intact, and I was able to read the, uh, the brands. I'm hoping to get some more. In the meantime, all well, looks like a humongous wine bottle. And yes, it is. When environmentalists say that plastic lasts for 500 years, they're not kidding. This is layer upon layer of just plastic bags and things. And if I wanted to, I could probably still read the brand name of that. There's just so much of it here. And it will be around for another 500 years. I thought there was no signs of burning until you dig down about two feet. Then you find things like this. What is that? At first I thought it was the mechanics behind a clock, but it's too big. Look at the number of gears and things in it. How seriously cool. 
No, is this brown or is this green? It's a green bottle. Let's get some sun onto it. The disadvantages of a 60s dig where there's been no fire, loads of plastic in layers and nylons. I was just starting to wonder what happened to all the American bottles when I dug out another clear one. Well, half of one anyway. But, yep, Warren Glassworks of Cumberland, Maryland. So they're still coming out. Here's an idea of what our family from the 1960s used to eat. All Scott peas from France, blue Danube Viennese coffee in a plastic bag. I always thought they came in jars, but there you go. And St. Michael, which is, of course, now uh, Marks and Spencer's, milk loaf. Okay, I'm being super careful now because of that American bottle that came out. This looks like a milk bottle. Yes, it is. And there's one here as well, which is probably a large wine bottle. And will it be a wine bottle? Mm, could be lemonade or something. There's another one there as well. Definitely not lemonade. When I was here before, I found a token for an amusement arcade. I've just uncovered this. About the size of a half penny, but I'm going to give this a quick wash and I'll see if I can get some details from it. It is a half penny. Um, I can see 1960 something on it. So I'll give it a clean tonight and let you know below. This is quite an interesting dig because it is actually revealing secrets from a family whose stuff was uh, dumped here in the 1960s. I'm finding lots of china as well. That's a bad thing because they're always cracked right through the middle of the maker's mark, making it impossible to read. But I haven't given up. I'm going to keep digging for some more of these American bottles. That was used as a plant pot. Nice design. As there hasn't been a fire here, all the combustibles, such as plastics and synthetics, are all um, survived, and it's a real nightmare to try and dig through these. There's definitely no shortage of milk bottles around here. The things have been drying up for a little while now. Is this a small bottle? No, it's part of a larger bottle. Right, so what was our family from the 1960s eating? Bird's eye mixed vegetables, mashed potatoes, blue brand margarine, and zone, which kills 99.9% .9 of all known germs. There you go. I was trying to get this shoe out of the way, and I found another decanter stop. I've got quite a collection of these now. A button. Something just fell out of the hole, and it's very, very freaky. Are you ready for this? Whoa. I was just trying to dig around this solid lump of whatever it is, and there's a nice, uh, beautiful bottle here, well and truly welded inside it. So, we're going to have to dig around this, I think. This mystery hole thing is uh, totally solid, and it's deep as well. What on earth? Why would it be burnt in that shape? Here are a few of the other finds. Coke bottle and two Pepsi bottles. I think these designs come from the 1960s. A baby's arm, how freaky. A very, very small, dainty perfume bottle, perhaps. Kids bits and pieces. The remains of a flash for a camera. Do you remember them? And a highlighter made in France and in French. Right, I'm going to call it quits for today because I am so tired. Um, that hole has me confused. I have seen things which have been fired before and end up being a big lump of rock with bits and pieces sticking out. But that is actually hollow. Now this camera is on a selfie stick and I shoved it in to see how deep it was and it's about a foot and a half deep and when you put your hand into the hole and feel around it's only about an inch and a half, two inches uh, thick. 
So who knows what that thing was? I'm just trying to avoid the wind here. Um, it could have been full of combustibles like plastics and wood and whatever, and they've just been totally incinerated. But why that funny shape? Either that or it could be a time portal into the 1960s. Now that would be cool. So I'm going to come back here next time and I'm going to see what this mysterious object is with the hole in it. And until I can disprove either theory, both of them are still current. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this uh, little adventure and I'll see you next time.